Okay, welcome back to part four of this little series. Um, we're going to be covering Acts now. We had covered in part one, we talked about the Old Testament and what this is about, women preaching. Uh, part one was the Old Testament scriptures. Part two was Matthew and Mark. Part three was Luke. Now we're going to part four, which is going to be about Acts. It's going to be a little bit longer. It's got 30 different spots. All right, let's open up with Acts. Acts chapter 3, verse 20. Let's turn to Acts in your King James Bible. Always the King James Bible. I mean, you can use another Bible, but it doesn't mean it's going to match up. That's for sure. All right, Acts chapter 8. I'm sorry. I want to say 8. I apologize. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Who's speaking here? Peter. So it's easy. Peter is speaking in this chapter, not a woman. And we're going to go through all of them, even the, even the controversial ones. Some people like to just not avoid it. I don't want to attack the controversial ones. Why? I don't understand that. Because, it, oh, because sometimes if they can't twist it to their knees, they want to stay away from it. Chapter 4, verse 2. Let's, let's read 1 into 2. This is, in this chapter, uh, it covers uh, Peter and John when they were arrested and tried uh, for their crimes. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So, here we see Peter and John. I don't think there's any argument here. Um, well, if there is an argument, there shouldn't be an argument. And I am missing a piece of paper, which is unfortunate. Hmm, interesting. This is live, folks. We are live, and uh, it's fun to be live. Huh, I don't know where my uh, paper was that I was looking for, but that's okay. Uh, chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple, let's go to 41. And they, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. It was not a woman. <coughs> and daily in the temple, and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So, no woman there. Interesting. All right, chapter 8, verse 4 and 5. Kind of bothering me a little bit. I'm wondering where I put my other notes here so I can make sure I follow the verses exactly the way I have them written. And you can hear all types of noises behind me because I've got so many Bible books. I'm sorry, paper. I was off screen and that was incredibly professional. And that is interesting. Oh well, I guess uh, that one is gone. All right, Acts chapter eight, verses four and five. Ah, yes. This is where we can use to uh, have women involved. All right. Therefore they that are scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now, let's go to chapter 3 to set this up. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Now, see, people are going to read this and say, look, they said men and women committed them to prison. And then the next verse, Steve, it says, therefore they that are scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Very easy to make that. It's really easy to try to twist that to your, but does it say women preached? Nowhere does it say women preach. It talks about imprisonment. You can tell people, as well, hey, what happened to you? He goes, yeah, they came in, they were coming after us, and, you know, for, for because of our belief in Jesus and stuff. It's not preaching. You can call it evangelizing almost, but it's not preaching. Don't try to make something happen that ain't happening. All right, Acts chapter, I'll put that there, Acts chapter 12, 8, verse 12. All right, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Not both men and women were preaching. They were both men and women were baptized. Not preaching. Verse 25, same chapter. And they 
when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. I want you to recognize the word they. Not all. So if everyone is called to preach, if all are called to preach, the word would be all. Don't tell me the word all doesn't exist because it's in the Bible. They had the word all. They can change all. But they choose the they. And those, those who are called, they that are called, means there's a specific grouping. Not everyone is called to preach. Please understand the gr grammar here, the grammatical text, or how this works. You don't, listen, I dropped out of high school, I quit high school, went and got my GED, then was going to go to college for a brief time, didn't want to do that either. I was quite the uh, rambunctious uh, young man, um, so it's not that, I don't have this four-year college degree in philosophy or theology, and anybody's using, by the way, that also is a, a deep-rooted theological discussion and, and the philosophy of this women teaching thing, you know, women preaching. That's the, the roots of that is from that. So if you're into women preachers and, they, and you claim that all women are to preach, then you have to now admit the fact that you're into philosophy, and that's a belief that you have in theology. Sorry, that's just the way it is. I'm not telling you because I want to tell you. Uh, it's just the way it is. It's fact. Alright, so where were we? Verse 25. Did we read verse 25? Yes, we did. And they. I want to talk about and they. You don't even need, need a group of names. They does not mean all. That, dis, that, that disproves in itself the all are called to preach. No, no. They. I know I keep saying it, but you have to understand it. Uh, chapter 9, verse 20. 9, verse 20. And still in Acts. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. This is when Saul was called to the Gentiles. So I understand the context. So we're talking about Saul and Ananias. And, anyways, the eyes. All right, verse 40. I believe verse 40 is Philip. Let me, 40, 40, 40, 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Why did I think this was... Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. We weren't in 40. I, I do apologize for that. Uh, we're in, uh, still in 9, but verse 27. 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. And we talk about Saul here. And that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Paul, not a woman. Alright, let's go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, <coughs> excuse me, 36 and 37. All right, Peter, okay, do, 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 do. Where's, where am I? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, this is when Peter had his vision, this, this whole particular chapter here. So not a woman. This is just Peter speaking. All right, verse 42, same chapter. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be, judge, to be the judge of quick and dead. So that is Peter speaking about the, uh, uh, the responsibilities and duties of the, uh, of the uh, twelve there, or eleven, rather, until the twelfth. Um, where are we now? So I've, been, I've been going through so much scripture tonight, I almost lost, I'm losing place where I was. Chapter 11, verse 19. Oh, this is when uh, they were in Antioch. Okay. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word 
to none but unto the Jews only. No mention of women here, so we can move forward from that. I don't think this is controversial. Uh, maybe someone will. Uh, and some of and. Uh, some, and some, some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. It didn't say because some of them were men and some of them were women, because uh, God's not the author of confusion, so if there's women, he would say women. There's no women, clearly. I don't know why that's a controversial verse, but some say it is. I don't know why. Acts chapter 13, verse 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. Uh, this is when Paul and Barnabas um, went to Cyprus. Uh, I believe they're talking brief. Oh, no, that's a different one. But that's, yeah, they're Barnabas and Paul when they went there. I think the next one I wanted to cover uh, was about John the Baptist. Let's swear we here. Chapter 13, verse 24. Yes, when John had first preached before his coming the baptism, baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Again, no controversy here. Men, man, no women. Verse 38. Be it known, I know some of you have already watched all the parts up to this point. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, uh, or Part 4 now. And like, um... Yeah, we're kind of getting it. And I, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you completely understand and you're reading the scriptures with me here. And, and I'm hoping you're reading them with me. And if you're not, you might be listening to the podcast on Spotify. That's fine, too. Um, and when you get home, please, I'm, I, I implore you to, to fact check me. Go read to make sure I read you every single word in the King James Bible. Not the ESV, NIP, or any of the rest. From the King James Bible. That's where I would have to uh, agree with Brian. Um, read. Don't just listen. Again, when you get home, if you're out, then yes, double check. All right, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Brethren. All right, so let's talk about brethren for one second here. This is not a unisex word. This is not a gender neutral word. This is not some equality word or equity and diversity in the world we got going on. No, sorry about all that, but no, that's not what brethren means. It means brothers. You can't call a woman your brother. It goes, I've heard people refer to women and men as brethren. Okay, well, they're wrong. It's not the definition, so. Just because you heard somebody use a word out of context, or not even out of context, incorrectly, not matching the definition of the word at all, doesn't make it right. Understand the definition of the word. All right, we are now going to go to verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Again, women, not men. Very simple to understand. All right, chapter 14, verse 7. See, it's really easy to go through all these scriptures and debunk this whole theory of women are called to preach. Understand verbiage. They, them, he, men, brethren, man, disciples. Pretty simple. And I get it because there are people who want to. There's, there's this desire to do so. And, and there's, it's not a negative thing that you want to. As a woman, in, in a, a husband, you should be biblically founded before you make these decisions, obviously. But it's a natural desire to have the zeal. And I'm not knocking that part. I mean, I'm glad that you're fired up. And that you want to, you know, you want to go spread the word. But once you read the Bible and understand the duties of a woman and the duties of a man, you know that you can't because you're not called to. God didn't call you to do so. The women, woman is the weaker vessel. The Bible says so. What about Phoebe? I mean, not Phoebe. Uh, who was I thinking of? Uh, oh, man, I forget her name already. Yikes. Deborah. That's who I was thinking of. So, 
yeah, it's it's not your call. It's not your duty. It's not your calling to go and preach. It just isn't. It's unscriptural. Any way you, you cut the bread, you can slice it however you want, but that bread ain't gonna cut right. All right, chapter, 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 chapter fourteen, verse fifteen, I think. It's saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you. Oh, we're talking about men. Sirs, men. And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are here. I'm sorry, they are in. So again, this is referring to men, about men. This is what... Anywhere you find preaching, preacher, preacheth in the word study, you're going to find this. So when you're doing your word studies, just help you along here, boom, that's what you're going to find. It's just simple. I know somebody's going, well, I can't believe you don't think women should preach. What does it matter what I think? And that's where the confusion comes in. What does it matter what you think? What does the Bible say? If you want to call yourself a Bible believer... Then why don't you believe? Take out your feelings. Well, it's tough when Jesus is crucified and you read that. That's absolutely heartbreaking. But now I'm thinking about it. Pause. This is not what you're supposed to be called to do. You're not called to preach. Women are not called to preach. Why do you want to throw away the greatness that God created you to do to go do what you're not commanded to do? Interesting. Sometimes it's just false discipleship. All right, verse 21. And when they had preached the gospel to the city... Oh, wait, where am I? I apologize. Yeah, I'm in the right spot. Uh, preached the gospel to, the, to that city and had taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, which is Paul and Barnabas when they returned to Antioch and, uh, and uh, Syria. Uh, all right, verse 25, same chapter. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. Again, still same people. No women involved here. All right, chapter 15. We're going to go to Acts chapter 15, just looking at the time. Acts chapter 15, verse 35. Where are we? 35. Interesting, I got 35 and 36 I got written down. Okay. Uh, Paul also and Barnabas, already they were actual names here, so not, really not hard to understand, continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Now look at that. That there, if you have any generic, they're going to see who the brethren that they have preached to. They are very specific about who they're talking about. They're not talking about, let's go visit all the women that we preach to, all the men that we preach to. Very specific. Don't discount the obviousness and the simplicity of that. All right, chapter 15, verse 21. I skipped 21. Did I skip verse 21? I did, and I apologize for that. For Moses of old... Well, it's on here, but somehow I skipped it. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Uh, well, it's an easy... That's probably why I accidentally skipped it. It's obvious and simple. All right. Chapter 16, verse 6. We are still in Acts. Chapter 16, verse 6. Now, when they had gone throughout... Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Okay, we're all set here, right? That, I mean, there's nothing to. I mean, this is Timothy had joined Paul at this point in time in Acts, so he was with. Uh, so, I I don't know how to explain this, but the fact it's pretty self-explanatory. Nothing to do with the women uh, preaching, so. Um, we can now move to the next one. Uh, 16, chapter 16, still 16, verse 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we ende endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us 
for to preach the gospel unto them. Not all, but to them. All right, which were men. All right, now we're going to move on to chapter 17, verse 3. It's not really hard to understand all this. I know that we want it to say something that makes it easier to, to do certain things that we want to do instead of what we're called to do. Acts chapter 17, verse 3. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Who is this? This is Paul. He, this is when Paul is preaching in Thessalonica. So, that's an easy one. Uh, we're going to go to chapter 17, verse 13. And, oh, there we go. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Mm. And immediately the brethren, so we got brethren, men, brothers, sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timothy is ab abode there still. So he is in preaching in Berea at this time, time frame. Um, we're going to next uh, look at, uh, I think we're going to go to Athens, aren't we? 17, chapter 17, verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto the, them Jesus and the resurrection. This is when Paul was in Athens, preaching in Athens, so that's an easy one. All right. See how easy this is to go through? Don't let men take something, and I've said this repeatedly, and add it to things so they can make it sound good. Women, you have a, a beautiful gift. You have you you have a God has given you an a beautiful. I'm not talking about gifts and callings at this point. I'm talking about uh, the ability to, to to bear children. I can't bear children. He gave me that ability. I don't stay home and raise my children. That's that's women. Women can do that. W women that biblically speaking, that's what women are supposed to do. I'm not saying all women can or do or. I'm not talking about circumstances and all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking, biblically speaking, what God has called women to do. And again, with those who are doing it, as a man, thank you for what you do. As a, as a husband and a father, thank you for all wives and mothers out there who do what the Bible has called them to do and not what they were not called to do. All right, now we're going to go into, I think we're in chapter 20. Verse 7. We're going to go verse 7. Okay. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. So, Paul's in Troas at this point, so that was a pretty simple one to deal with. Alright, now we're going to go to Acts chapter 20. We are already in Acts chapter 20. Uh, verse 25. And now behold... I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Uh, who's this? Oh, Paul. Okay, so that was an easy one again. It's amazing. All right, chapter 28. Let me look at the time here. Not bad, not bad. Chapter 28. Somebody say, see this guy. Oh. He doesn't go in depth. He's trying to hurry up and, and, and hurry up and make these videos. He's more concerned about the speed than the accuracy. Well, what accuracy? I just read you word by word every single scripture. I couldn't have been more accurate. And the speed, yes, I'm trying to get through them quickly so people don't have to spend all night watching a video because people have families. People have studying. People have other things to do. I understand that, so that's why I broke it up into these sections so it's easier to get to watch them as time, when time permits, and I do hope that time does permit. Uh, chapter 28, verse 31. 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. What's going on here? Paul is in Rome at this point. Um... By the way, Paul, 
not Peter, the boss pope because he wasn't pope, Paul was in Rome. But anyways, that's a, another whole video one day, we'll get to that. Although I think people have covered that pretty well actually over the years. I mean, maybe I'll, uh, I'll cover it at some point in time. Alright, so we have now, let's put the check mark if you're watching. We are what? One, two, three. We are now finished part four of this series in Acts. Again, what, what have we found so far? Well, exactly what we knew we would find. That all, not all were commanded to preach. Not all are called to preach. Because if you want to use the word all, understand the definition of all. I was uh, work, I was working one day and uh, we were we had closed the uh, docks the receiving department. Yes, I don't just preach. I work because um, that's what I'm commanded to do. Um, the Lord, you know, a man who doesn't uh, work with his hand does he get to eat? I'm paraphrasing, but you know what I mean. So somebody was saying I, we had a couple trucks and they said, "Oh, we're gonna take these ones." And I says, "Okay, hold on." Um, the email said all uh, trucks are being denied, so we're not. So tell all the drivers not to show up during that uh, inventory uh, count. Well, we're going to take this one or that one. It's amazing. Not only does the world, but the Christian churches too, and Christ or those who call themselves Christian, don't understand the word all. No, this is not mocking people. I'm just saying all has a definition. It means all. It's not all except for, and maybe this one. Well, that one, but all, not a thing. Like, till and through. When you up till something or through something, they, not all, them, not them, but them, not all, brethren, not brothers and sisters, please understand the definition of each word. It, the Bible is really simple in some places. It really is. Try not to read what's not there. Read the scripture for what the scripture says. Not your emotions. I guess that means I'm, I don't have a lot of mercy, I, I guess someone would say. Thank you for allowing me to drink as I talk. And, uh, water, of course. Uh, I appreciate that dry throat. Well, for speaking. Alright, so that's the end of part four. Thank you for watching, as always. I thank you for watching part one, part two, part three, part, well, this will be part four. Thank you. Um, I couldn't put into words how important it is for us to understand these things. You would think by now that it would be a clear understanding, at least in the uh, professing Christian world, the difference between man and woman, but clearly not all the time. All right, that is it for tonight's video. God bless and have a beautiful night.